Hello and welcome to another episode of Circuit Crush TV. I'm your host, Brian Jenkins, and today we're going to take a look at this device. Now, this device is good to have in your car for emergencies, and um, you can use this thing to inflate your tires. Here we have a tire inflator hose. It also has a lot of other features. We have two 12-volt sockets right here. We have a small power jack. We have a work light. We have a USB port. And here's the second 12 volt jack. And even a 120 receptacle that we could plug some small appliance into. And if we turn it around, the main feature is we can use this to jumpstart the battery or jumpstart our cars if the battery in your car happens to die. So we have the, the two jumper cables here, the red and the black, and then the switch to turn it on and off. Now, on the side, this is where we charge this thing. It runs off of um, a sealed lead acid battery, I'm going to presume. And it doesn't work. It's deader than a doornail. For some reason, it just quit working. I've had this thing for three, four years, and we could see that this is the battery status button. This needle should be moving up. I had this on the charger for several hours. Um, we don't have any light coming on here, so something is wrong with this thing, and I suspect that the battery went. Now, there are about 10 screws in the back, and to spare you guys the pain of watching me remove a bunch of screws, I already removed them. So I'm just going to go ahead and carefully open this up, and we're going to take a peek inside here. So here we have the inside of this thing. We have the battery, which I suspect is the culprit. We have a 15-amp fuse, which is actually accessible from the back when it's put back together. And then over here we have where you plug it in to charge it. That's actually an AC adapter. I wasn't expecting that. And then the motor for the air pump and some other circuitry. I haven't really taken a good close look at any of this stuff, really. So i um, not sure what everything here does. Some of it's obvious. Some of it isn't. But what I want to do is go ahead and try to remove this battery. First, we'll start with the simple stuff and probably throw it on a trickle charger to see if I can get it to charge. If not, I'm probably going to have to buy a replacement battery. Now, this thing cost me about $60, 60 something dollars. So if I can get a battery, either charge it up for free or if I can get a new battery cheap enough, it's definitely worth the fix. So let's go ahead and get this battery out of here. Go ahead and remove this little nut, these wires that are connected here. Let's get rid of that. We would want to be really careful not to short anything or let any of the, these, um, like the black go and touch anything positive. This battery is pretty dead, but you never know. We don't want any, any accidents. So be safe. Keep this kind of stuff in mind when you're working with electronics. And we want to disconnect this nut here. There's a washer, and then this other, these two other red cables here. One goes to the fuse, the other one, I don't know where it goes, somewhere. And then the negative, actually that's a positive terminal of the battery, okay. Let's just tuck that away, because again, we don't want that to short. And these nuts are on kind of tight, so I have here a pair of Kleins. These are linemen's pliers that electricians usually use. I used to be an electrician's apprentice back in the day, so I want to go ahead and give that a twist and then carefully remove that and just, we'll have to remember of course that this yellow one gets connected to here and this actually goes to the jumper cable. So I'm going to tuck that out of harm's way too. And then, looks like there's a strap holding down the battery. Let's go ahead and remove that, and then I can pull the battery out and hopefully disconnect the positive cable. And we can see right away, too, we got some corrosion around here on the uh, negative terminal. So, you're probably going to want to clean that up. The battery may be bad, it may not. I don't know yet at this point. But, we're going to find out. And remove that screw. Okay. 
Okay, so there's the strap that holds the battery down. And here is the battery itself. We'll just pop that guy out. And oh, some of that corrosion fell off. I'm gonna go ahead and use a pair of needle nose to loosen this nut. And again, I'll just have to remember which cable connects to which terminal. So this I'm just gonna leave alone. This I have to actually disconnect from the terminal to get this thing out of here. Get that a couple of turns with the needle nose. Then I could probably just get that with my fingers. And of course, I'm probably going to want to wash my hands after touching this because I don't know what this corrosion, what this stuff is. And um, it's not something that I would want in my eyes or in my mouth or uh, anywhere else like that. So common sense goes a long way when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. Okay, and there's a tiny lock washer. And then, of course, a, um, a screw that holds that down. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and put that nut right back on that screw so I don't lose it. Little parts like this have a tendency to get lost. So, okay. Here we have the um, battery. You can see that, that material coming off, just, just that corrosion or whatever that is. And it is a sealed lead acid battery. And... Initial current less than 2.4 amps, non-spillable. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is I have a trickle charger in the garage. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this on that charger for a couple of hours. And I'm going to see if we get anything. And just to be certain right now, I have my trusty voltmeter. I'm going to check the voltage across the terminals to see that it is indeed either zero or very low. Switch it on. And I could smell, there's a funny smell already. I could smell probably this stuff that um, is coming off of there. But okay, this thing's down to a half bolt. It's supposed to read like 14.4 to 15. So yeah, th this thing is dead. Let's go ahead, put in the trickle charger, and I'll be back and I'll let you know what happens. Okay, so we're back. And I have the old battery. I did put it on a trickle charger actually twice. The first time I had it on there for about six hours, and when I read the voltage, it got up to about 10 volts. Several hours later, I took it off, and then I checked it again several hours later, that voltage had already dropped several volts. The second time I put it on, it gave me a reading of about 10 or 12 volts, I think it was, after nine hours. So this battery's toast, and I went ahead and I got a new battery. This is a Duracell battery, it's an equivalent one. It has to fit inside the unit, of course, and it has similar specs as far as voltage goes. It's a 12-volt battery, and then amp hours also. This claims to be 10 amp hours. I have some doubts about that. Uh, this is a 9 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. And I got this at Batteries Plus Bulbs, which is right down the street from my house. Now, if you don't have a place like that by you, you can probably just go online to Amazon or, or some other site that specializes in this type of stuff to buy this. So I have already wired this up mostly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slap this thing back together. And the battery, when I tested it, did have a, a charge on it. So it's charged up probably most of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. I'm going to see what the state of charge is, charge it fully if I have to, and then see if it works, and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so here comes the moment of truth. I've connected everything again, put the battery strap back, everything is connected, except I didn't put it back together, of course, just in case it doesn't work. So I'm gonna turn it around, like that, and we're going to take a look at, this needle should move when I press this button, and indeed it does. This battery is pretty much fully charged. We also have light, and we have our tire inflator back. So the battery has been replaced and this thing is fixed and hopefully the battery lasts another four or five years or more. I'm gonna go ahead, put it back together completely and then put it back in my wife's car and we're done. Thanks guys for watching. If you have any comments, please do comment, share the video. Tell me about your latest fix. Tell me all about it, what it is and how it went.